This is the Antpo RCA10. And yes, it is a novelty speaker, but it's very interesting. If you grew up in the 70s or 80s, you have likely seen, used, or owned something very similar to this, except bigger. This reminds me a lot of my first boombox. It was a Panasonic. I don't recall the model, but it looked a lot like this. Before we get into the operation and quality of the RCA10, just take a few moments to appreciate the beauty and design of this homage to the boom boxes of yesteryear. When you pick up the RCA10 for the first time, you will be impressed with the weight in your hand. This is mostly made of metal, with plastic only used for the accent pieces. Yes, the handle moves up and down, just like a real boombox. This is a quality piece. I don't fear breakage on this. I have full confidence that this will not break. Let's examine the controls on top of the speaker. They mostly do what you would expect them to do. The power controls the power and the volume controls the volume. But if you are listening to a Bluetooth source, you can use the volume on that as well. They don't really cancel each other out and they don't really work together. They just kind of do their own thing and uh, this thing figures it out. The bass and treble dials here do nothing. The cassette control buttons will change the track control on your TF card or your Bluetooth source. They also will scan through radio stations. Now, that was kind of disappointing to me because on my boombox, this dial here scanned through the radio frequencies. Why they couldn't make this work, I don't know, but it doesn't. This is just here for show. There is a telescoping antenna for the FM radio function of the speaker, and it is comically large when you consider the scale of the radio. As I mentioned, this does support TF cards, but as I was testing, the music kept stopping and it would switch to Bluetooth temporarily and then go back to the TF card. I didn't like that. And eventually it just stopped playing altogether. So I don't know if there is a memory capacity problem on the card that I was using or what's happening. But all I can say is based on my testing, don't count on the TF card slot to work very well. In this panel, we have display lights. There is a blue light for Bluetooth mode. There is a green light for radio mode and a red light for charging mode. Uh, there's no light specifically for the TF card, but it doesn't work very well anyway, so I guess that doesn't matter. And then down here, we have a bouncing spectrum analyzer that seems to pick up from a microphone, perhaps. The louder you play, the more that thing bounces. Um, but it, you have to really get it up there to the point where it doesn't sound very good anymore, and then it will be spectacular. One thing that I thought was a missed opportunity is this is an analog VU meter, or at least it's a picture of one. It actually does nothing, but wouldn't that be cool if that actually worked? The cassette player that they have here doesn't do anything. It's just there for aesthetic purposes, and I like it there. I don't think that these tweeters do anything either, nor I believe these are where microphones would be. I don't, I think there might be a microphone on here. It doesn't say that, but this is responding to something, and I don't, um, Maybe it's a microphone, maybe it isn't. I don't have any specifications about the drivers in the speaker, but I think they are dual five watt full range speakers. On the back, we have something that might be a passive radiator behind here, but I'm not exactly sure. It is definitely vented. It might just be a, a base port, but there's not a tremendous amount of base here, so, Maybe, maybe not. Is the RCA10 simply a novelty or does it actually work well? This speaker sounds pretty good at moderate levels. And what I mean is if you are listening at 75% volume or less, 
you will have a pleasant experience. You won't get a tremendous amount of bass, but you won't get any distortion either. Yes, you can force the speaker into distortion if you turn it up loud enough. This is especially true if you're using the FM radio, but just as a Bluetooth speaker, it will sound good at moderate volumes. There is a 3000 milliamp hour battery in the speaker. In the manual, well, it's not much of a manual, it's more of a pamphlet. I saw that it operates for six hours of playback, and I've also seen eight to 10 hours of playback. I would lean more towards the six hours, but this thing is really small. It's not that loud. And so you might you might get the eight to 10. Oh, you know what it probably is? If you are using this to listen to FM radio, you will probably get the eight to 10 hours. If you are using a Bluetooth source, which uses more battery, then it probably would land more towards the six hour range. The FM radio sounds good, but there's no way to know what radio station you are listening to. This doesn't change, which is normally where the frequency would be displayed. There is no digital display. You can scan through the stations, but there's no way to know where you're landing and what you're listening to, unless they say it on the radio station itself. But if you accept that limitation, once you find a station that you like, it, it does sound good. How do I rate the RCA-10? From a nostalgia perspective, this is off the chart awesome. It is well made. It, it looks so much like what I used to have back in the day, but it isn't perfect. I don't like that the frequency doesn't display here. I wish that there would be some kind of animation or movement on the cassette. I, I would love it if the VU worked, but it doesn't. Um, and of course, the TF card slot didn't work very well for me at all. And why doesn't this FM tuner work here? I, I don't know. So it is it is super cool, but it's not perfect. I do think it is worth owning. In fact, I'm going to give this a four out of five star rating. Thanks for stopping by.